last year was a you, know, you had you were coming off a spectacular season. Then last year you had a lot of challenges. Uh, where are you physically and just you know mentally outlook for the next year? Uh, physically, I'm feeling well right now. Mentally, it's all about uh, a fresh reset. Not just because we have new coaches. It's it's a new season every season. No matter if you've been in an organization for four years or five years, it's always a new season. So, you know, how are you going to approach this season? You know, what's your mindset? What are you going to bring to the team? How can you influence the guys in the locker room, you know, from a mental standpoint from, for me? Wild, how do you compare your 2021 with your 2022? That's the sleep, right? Never goes exactly how you envision. What's your outlook for 2023? What are you looking for? I'm excited because it's 2023. So I, ha you know, we have another opportunity. Like you mentioned, 2021, 2022. Now it's 2023. You got another opportunity to write another page in, in your book. So you know, what are you going to do? What's this chapter going to be? You know, what do you want to? How do you want to express yourself in, with this chapter? So that's what I'm excited for. What did 2022 teach you? 2022 taught me. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm pretty 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 tough on, on mentally. You know. It, you never want to go to a, go through a season and think, oh, why, why is this going on? You know, not only individually, but collectively as a team. And it just taught me, you know, hey, we got a lot of resilient guys in this room because we know what we spoke about in the, in the locker room and amongst ourselves about, hey, what are we going to do? How are we going to approach this next season? So it just showed me uh, we got a lot of tough mentally guys here, a lot of mentally tough guys here. Any contract discussions as far as extension and, and, and where and how much do you want to possibly get that done before the season starts? Yeah, I don't even know how that goes. You always just see that, but it's not until you're really in that situation to where you're like, okay, what happened? So I'll keep you posted. Uh, that's all I know. <laughs> you're moving pretty good on the way in here. You threw past the surgery. Are you feel like good to go, like good to do everything right now? Oh, no, not everything right now, but <sighs> we're rolling. Oh, I mean, anytime you get a procedure, you'll definitely feel the difference, 100%. I mean, better. Do you, does it, do you feel better? Oh, ready, before? Oh, ready? yeah, no, yeah, it's success. Perfect success, 100%. I know you don't love the contract stuff, but you're going to be your four, and that's a player who's produced like you. That's a fair conversation to have. Are yeah. you a guy that wants to get that done before the season starts? A lot of guys say they don't want it to be a distraction when camp starts. Is that even on your mind? Yeah, no, it wouldn't be a distraction to me. Like, I'm, I'm under contract here for four years. I put the pen to the paper, so that's where, that's where I'm at right now. I, you know, I made an obligation to them. They made an obligation to me. But things will, things will happen naturally. Like, like I said, it's not until you actually get into that situation to where you're like, oh, well, let's, let's see how, how do you handle this situation. Because you always just see it, but you never know what do those guys actually go through. This is setting up to be the sixth year of the six different quarterback with the draft coming up. How important is it for the offense to get some consistency finally at that position? I, I think it's definitely important long term, you know, chemistry-wise. That's a big thing. You know, a lot of quarterbacks that are very successful, they kind of really know their guys. Well, one, obviously they're very, very talented. But on the other hand, they know their guys. They have the timing down. I mean, you see all these other quarterbacks, and, and you know, they're flying guys out. They're training together. It's all about building that connection. It's all about building, you know, that 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 recourse with those guys. So just being able to, whoever this, whatever the case may be, you know, it could be a quarterback, could not. On my end, and in the running back room, it's hey, you know, I, I've been here for a few years. Just to let you know, I'm here with you. The running back room is here with you. This guy could be a defensive guy, could be an offensive guy. Just know, hey, if you're on defense. We're going to do everything we can to score so you guys can, can go out there, get a quick three and out, and we get the ball back. So quarterback, hey, or an offensive guy, anybody, I got your back. I'm right here. I got your back. You guys have had a very run-heavy offense the past few years. Shane is talking, each time we talk to him, he's talking about throwing the ball and being aggressive down the field. What do you think this is going to look like for you as a running back? Do you have any idea yet? Oh, it's going to be a lot of me watching Michael Pittman taking guys deep and scoring touchdowns. So. Uh, I'm I gotta start sprinting down the field so I can go celebrate with Pittman. I mean, does that what does that equate to in terms of running the ball for you? I mean, does it is it a positive impact or less is more or I don't know? What do you think? Like you, it, it doesn't matter. It could be less is more. All I know is we're gonna have to be efficient. No matter if we're running the ball a lot, you better be efficient. If you're throwing the ball more, you better be efficient.
Shane, Shane does come from a team that was maybe the best in football at running the ball. Have you looked much at the Eagles? Do you get excited about some of the possibilities? Oh, de definitely. Uh, and like those guys up front in Philly, they did a heck of a job. Miles Sanders and that whole crew did, did a great job. But it's impressive when you watch the tape, like how much on the same page they were. It looked like they were very on, on one accord. They played for one another. So that was really cool to watch, you know, on the film. Is JT going to show up a wedding band? House Mary I mean, I got the rubber one. I mean, it's not like I got a ring like, like she does, but I got a rubber one. Um, they really do come in handy. I thought, you know, I'll see how it feels when I finally get the real one. I'm like, ah, oh, I see why they get the rubber one. I see why. All right. Um, Omar. Uh, players have talked about maybe decompressing from last season. What did you do to, I guess, reset after last season? Did you get away? Did you watch the film? Did you, did you not want to watch? Like, what did you do to just... Oh, no. Well, one, you definitely always watch the film. But as far as getting away, I think it's, it's critical when, when things finally do end, whether it's you're in the Super Bowl or whether it was the final regular season game. What, what, do, you, what do you dream about? What did you like to do when you were a kid? Like, how do you just get to your happy place? I think that's most important when the season first ends. So whether that's going out to Scottsdale, or whether that's going down to Texas, wherever your place is where you're like, nothing matters, time moves slow, how can you just become it in your happy place? And I think that's, I know that's what, what I did in order to decompress mentally. You're always gonna get your body back. A lot of it is mental, you know, especially with, you know, a lot of other th things we had to deal with last year. I think that just get to your happy place, reset, because you're already going to be eager to get back out there and get the work. But just take some time for yourself.